In this video, I wanna take you on my seven minute complete lower limb stretching program. So we're going from the pelvis down to the ankle, making sure that we are hitting all the key players when it comes to lower back, hip, knee, ankle pain, so that we can be stretched out, fully flexible and ready to go. So if you are prepared to commit seven minutes every day in order to hit your targets, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna show you the stretches, tell you what you should be feeling during the stretches, why we're doing the stretches, and so you can have that complete knowledge that in seven minutes, your lower limbs are all gonna be stretched out and ready to go. So let's dive right in, but firstly, my name's John. Thanks for checking out this channel here at John W Sports Injury. We wanna be doing three simple things on this channel. We wanna help you to understand your body so you can get rid of pain and weakness and you can ultimately be striving forward to hit your health, well-being, sport and exercise goals. So in this one, as I said, we are gonna be diving into some key stretching principles. Now, before we dive into any stretching program, I just wanna go through a quick couple of rules that I think is important to understand before you embark upon this. We wanna be making sure that when we're doing these stretches, and these are static stretches, so that means we're gonna be holding a muscle in a lengthened position for a period of time. That period of time is going to be 30 seconds at least. We wanna be holding each of these stretches for 30 seconds. If you're doing it on something like hard floor, wood floor, oak laminate flooring, it might be best grabbing something like a gym mat or a pillow or cushion to go underneath pillows and knees. But what we want to be making sure that we're doing is not causing pain to our body. So if you are feeling pain, particularly around a joint when you're doing those stretches, perhaps it's a stretch to avoid and perhaps just get checked out by a local medical practitioner so you can understand what's actually causing that pain. But that's enough of that. With those rules being followed, let's dive straight into this stretching program. And we're gonna kick off at the top and the top of our lower limbs being our pelvis. And we're gonna go with our hip flexors first of all. Now, why the hip flexors are so important that are being stretched out. Well, firstly, a large amount of people have a tendency to be tight in that area. When we're sitting, we sit in hip flexion, so if you spend a lot of time sat down, then that can lead to tight hip flexors. But the reason that that's so important that we're stretching them out is that they actually attach onto our lumbar spine or our lower um, vertebrae of our spine. So how do we stretch these out? Well, what you want to be doing is dropping down onto one knee. This is the knee of the side that you're going to be stretching. Place your other foot out in front of you, and what we want to do is then drive that knee with the foot in front over the toe. You'll start to feel a pull in the front of your hip. That's where you should be feeling the stretch. Now to really make that stretch count and get that real bang for your buck out of this stretch, what you can do is drive your hands above your head, driving your chest backwards. Now that opposite movement of driving the knee forwards and the chest backwards creates a large amount of hip extension and you should feel a real big stretch around the front of the hip. Remember, we're holding that for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, we repeat on the other side. And then that's our first minute done. And that's the hip flexors. Now, the good thing about this program is we can very easily stay in this position and cover off a lot of our stretches. So from that position, all you now look to do, the foot that was out in front of you, place that leg straight out in front of you so the heel becomes onto the floor. And that leg that's gone straight out in front of you, by slightly tipping your hip forwards, you should start to feel a hamstring stretch. What are the hamstrings? Well, they're the muscles on the back of your leg between the hip and the knee. So you should feel a pull in this area. Now, these are big players when it comes to things like lower back pain. They attach onto the back of the pelvis so if they're short and tight, they pull that pelvis backwards, causing pressure in the lower back. So stretching those out could be really beneficial. So again, we slowly lean forwards into that stretch so we feel the stretch happening in the back of the leg. Don't push so far that you're getting pain. Just gently ease into that stretch, find that sweet spot and hold that for 30 seconds. Once we've done 30 seconds, repeat on the other side and that's one minute of stretching done. Now, from that position with the leg straight out in front of us, we can take the leg out to the side. When we take it out to the side, we should hit our groin or adductor areas. The groins are the muscles that live on the inside of the leg. So you should feel pull on the inside of the leg when you're doing this stretch right. In the same principles as the hamstring stretches that we previously did, we wanna keep our uh, knee straight and locked out and we can slowly rotate that pe pelvis forwards to feel a bigger stretch in that area. Once we find that stretch, we feel those fibers elongated, hold that for 30 seconds, then repeat on the other side, and all from that one position of the knee being on the floor, we should have hit three minutes worth of stretching, hitting three big players, being the hip flexors, hamstrings, and the groins. 
Now we're going to move on to stretch our quads. The quads are the muscles that live on the front of the legs uh, from between the hip and the knee or our thigh muscle areas. Now these muscles actually cross the knee, directly impact upon that knee. So real big one to make sure that we are loosened out in that area so that we're not putting excessive pressure on the knee. How to do this? We've got a couple of ways, but the sort of gold standard way is to lay on your front and just pull your hip up towards your bottom. Now as you put, pull your hip, pull your foot up towards your bottom, sorry. As you pull that foot up, what you want to do is grab hold of that ankle and pull that in towards your bottom. If you've got full range, then you'll be able to get your foot to touch your bottom. If you haven't got full range, not a problem, just pull that foot as far as you can till you feel that point of pull or point of elongation hold that stretch if you do find it difficult to grab hold of your foot that's very common in this stretch what we can do is modify that stretch a little bit and do it in side line so lay on your side and then you can allow your hips to go a little bit forward which will allow it to become easier for you to grab hold of your foot once you do, pull that foot in towards your bottom and then bring that leg to be as close to being in a straight line for the rest of your body. And as you bring that leg to being in a straight line, you'll feel that stretch increase in that front leg area. So 30 second hold, repeat on the other side and with four minutes, four stretches in. Now we're going to move on to what is possibly my favourite stretch. When people often ask me, what is the favourite stretch that you like to do? I love the glute stretch. Glutes, People who follow my content will know I talk about it a lot. I call them the big bullies. They're very problematic. They wrap around the hip. They attach into lower back pain. So big problems for lower back and hip pain, but also they control our lower limb stability. And so if we have dysfunction in these areas, the problems can definitely transfer down to the knee. So how do we stretch these? We'll lie on our back. From this point, we want to keep our shoulders flat on the floor. Then with a bent leg of the side we're looking to stretch, we can bring that knee up towards us and then bring it across us with the aim of driving that knee down towards the floor on the other side. Remember, you're keeping your shoulders flat so we're not rolling onto the side. What we're actually trying to do is create a rotation through that area. And that's when we'll really feel that glute being stretched in that area. Another thing I like about this stretch is that we can manipulate and change the knee position. You can bring the knee up towards the chest. You can let the knee drop a little bit lower if you prefer for all really try to move that around to find that real killer stretch that you know that you are feeling that great elongation through that tight area holding it for 30 seconds and stretching then on the other side once we've done that with five minutes through and what we've done is done five minutes with five stretches 30 seconds on each one and we've covered all the big players between our hips and our knees so now what we're going to do is go between the knee and the ankle and in particular the area on the back of the leg this area is our calf complex, and in that calf area, again, we've got two of these key muscles being the gastrocnemius and the soleus. Now, these are really important to stretch. One, we know that they both cross the ankle via the Achilles tendon. The gastrocnemius also affects the knee as well as the ankle. So they can be real key factors in getting pain in this area. We also know that this is the first area to um, actually sort of absorb ground reaction force. So it has a real tendency to get tight in those areas. You can do these stretches leaning up against a wall. I personally like that if we can do that, but it's not needed. It's not a necessity. What we do need to do is take our feet a fair distance apart. And the key principle for these stretches are that our toes are all pointing forwards and our feet are kept flat on the floor. Imagine that you've got super glue on the bottom of your shoes or feet keeping those fixed to the floor. Then what we do with keeping the back leg straight is we drive the front knee over the toe. And what you should feel is a pull in the back of the leg in the area I, uh, area I earlier described. So between the knee and the ankle, that's your gastrocnemius. If you can't feel that stretch, increase the distance between the two feet keep the heels flat on the floor and you should be getting that stretch. What people tend to do with this stretch is they allow that back foot to turn out a little bit, which takes the muscle off a stretch, or they allow the heel to lift a little bit, which again takes the muscle off stretch. So bear in mind those two key principles. Hold it for 30 seconds when you've got the sweet spot and then stretch it on the other side. And that takes us on to our last stretch, which is a stretch for an area that we call soleus, which lives in that calf complex, but is a little bit deeper to that gastrocnemius. Now, very similar stretch with one key modification. Bring those feet a little bit closer together to allow you to bend both legs this time. So rather than the back leg being straight, we're bending both legs. 
heels on the floor, toes pointing forwards, and you should be getting that stretch a little bit lower, a little bit deeper, but in the same sort of area. That's when we know we're bang on that soleus, getting a really good in that stretch, and really good area of stretch, and holding it for 30 seconds. Repeat on one side, then the other, and then we're done. That's all it is, seven minutes, seven stretches, seven key muscles are being elongated so that we can get those increased flexibility benefits, taking pressure away from those key joints that I mentioned at the lower back, hip, knee, and ankle. People often ask me, how many times should I be doing this a day? Well, the good thing about stretching is we probably can't do it too much. Not like strength training where we can overtrain. With stretching, if we can do it once a day, that's fantastic. If we can do it twice a day, it's absolutely brilliant. And three times a day, completely awesome. But what is so key to get our flexibility based benefits is that we maintain consistency. So rather than doing it multiple times a day, my key urge is that we try to factor it into our lives every day. Fit it into a slot, a seven minute window that you currently have, that you know you'll be able to keep to in order to keep this stretching program consistent because that's where you're gonna see the benefits. That's where you're gonna see the increased flexibility and that's where you're gonna feel more pain and increased ease of movement. Has that been helpful for you? If it has, and you've made it this far in the video, you can show me by smashing that like button because it shows me that that's the type of content you wanna see, and also YouTube are gonna see that you've watched this video for this long, therefore it's gonna be helpful for others and they're gonna show it to others. So do your good deed for the day, smash that like button. And if you're like most people who watch my videos and you haven't actually subscribed, well why not? hit that subscribe button. I find it hugely flattering to see our subscriber count go up. I know that that therefore means that I'm making the type of content that people want to see. Hugely appreciative of that. And I will be showing my gratitude by continuing to make videos that help you on your health and wellbeing journey. Hit the subscribe button and you will be the first to see the next one that comes out. And also, here's another video to help you on your health and wellbeing journey. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video.